Thank you for joining us today for a Semiconductor Insights Teardown of the Apple iPhone. My name is Greg Quirk, and I'm the Technical Marketing Manager at SI. With me is Alan Yogasingham, SI Supply Chain Manager. Before we get flamed, let me tell you why we're taking apart the iPhone. It's not that we hate Apple. We both have iPods, and we definitely drank from Apple's Kool-Aid on the iPhone. We're taking apart the iPhone to look at the semiconductor components inside. The iPhone is a quad-band edge Bluetooth Wi-Fi phone that comes in two varieties, an 8GB and a 4GB. It has an interactive touch screen, a 2 megapixel camera, and good software interface. The battery is supposed to last for about 8 hours of talk time and 250 hours in standby. I stood in line in Boston for 12 hours in the sweltering heat to make sure that we were going to be able to get one. It wasn't fun, but that's my dedication for you. Of course, there were supposed to be 3 million phones available on launch day, so maybe I really didn't have to be number 8 in line. The first thing you think when you see an iPhone is cool. As you can see, Sam is taking apart the iPhone. Taking apart an iPhone is more difficult than one might expect. This is a mobile device, so it has to be rugged enough not to break apart. Where something like the Nintendo Wii sits by your TV and doesn't get moved around as much, the iPhone has to be able to withstand average cell phone use, which includes being dropped. The first thing that strikes us as we look at the insides are the number of Apple branded components, like the last iPod Nano. Apple has packaged three parts with their own markings, and six more that seem to have Apple style part numbering and no other manufacturer markings. This can make it extremely difficult for someone to know who makes the parts, unless they have the proper tools to decap the devices so it's fortunate that we happen to have them. The next thing that is similar are the components that are the same between the iPhone and some of the latest iPod models. Samsung 65 nanometer 8 gigabyte MLC NAND flash was used in the iPhone. Interestingly, this is the exact same component that was used in the 8 gigabyte iPod Nano. This memory is used to store things like songs, pictures, and videos. The 4 gigabyte version of the iPhone also uses Samsung NAND flash. There's also an Intel wireless flash with 32 megabits of NOR coupled with 16 megabits of SRAM, which is necessary for code execution for call functionality. The iPhone features three RF components. There's an Apple branded part that has Infineon die markings. This could be the transceiver. It makes sense as the baseband processor is the Infineon PMB8876, or the S Gold 2 multimedia engine with advanced edge functionality. We also have the Marvell 88W8686. This is a 90 nanometer YLAN device. The last device is a Cambridge Silicon Radio, or CSR, Blue Core 4 ROM. This is a Bluetooth device that is also used in the BlackBerry Pearl 8100. The processor also has Apple package markings, but from decapping the device, we can identify it as a Samsung processor, which features a three stack die package with the processor and two 512 megabit SRAM dies. The die markings can be compared to other Samsung processors, like those found in the HTC Titan and other smartphones and PDAs. The audio codec is the Wolfson WM8758. To put this into perspective, this is the same codec that was used in your iPod video, so you should be able to get the same sound quality as you would experience from your iPod. Another Apple branded part is the Broadcom BCM5973A. There's no information available about this component, but we estimate that it provides the I.O. controller used for the video interface to the touch screen. Third Apple branded part is designed by Philips. Unfortunately, the die markings make it difficult, if not impossible, to determine exactly what the part is. The power amplifier is supplied by Skyworks. A similar power amp was used in the Motorola Razor V3X. Balda, a German company, scored the big design win with the touch screen. Balda is known for making touch screens that are durable and scratch resistant, a common complaint for the screens in the iPods. Balda has worked with Nokia, Motorola, and Sony Ericsson, but this is their most visible design win that we're aware of, which could help them get further recognition in the LCD industry. Overall, with our brief look at the insides of the iPhone, we could say there is nothing revolutionary about what makes it tick. However, we all know that marketing rules the world, and Apple's ability to incite the masses into a frenzy over a product launch will help the iPhone fly from shelves. Thank you for joining us for a look at the insides of the Apple iPhone. If you have any questions, or would like to see high-resolution images of the teardown, please contact me at GregoryQ at Semiconductor.com.